Hi, I'm Jenny Dakayanan, and welcome to my video. And today I will talk to you about Kwaibin dating. So, what is Kwaibin dating? Kwaibin dating was first discovered by Professor Libby, Willie Libby, in 1949. He wanted to find a way for geologists and archaeologists to correctly date or age the items that they found. And in doing so, he found this kind of method. And this method was used to approximate how long an organism had been dead for. And when he did that, you can approximate what time period the organism lives, lived. Um, the method uses a radioactive isotope called carbon-14 and because lots of different organisms have carbon within their systems, he was able to use a method to find an approximate time of death. So why is carbon-14 more favored than carbon-12 and what makes it different from what we usually see on a periodic table? Well, the basic definition of an isotope is an element, the same amount of protons, but different amount of neutrons. So usually what we see on the periodic table is a combination of their abundance. And the atomic number usually will lean towards the most abundant in the atmosphere or on Earth. And due to the periodic table, we are usually more familiar with carbon-12, which has six protons and six neutrons in the nucleus. However, other types of carbon do exist, like carbon-14 and carbon-13. Carbon-14 with eight neutrons and carbon-13 with seven. And all these different kinds of isotopes happen due to cosmic rays in the atmosphere that crash into the nucleus and transfer or takes away the neutrons. Now, if there are other isotopes, why does carbon dating only use carbon-14? Well, this is because of radioactivity. Carbon-14 is a radioactive isotope which is also known as a radioisotope, meaning that it's very unstable and will, will, and will likely decay by either alpha, beta, and gamma to get to a more stable state. This is why radioisotopes have half-lives, while stable isotopes, because they are more likely to not decay, will not have a half-life. So how do we intake this carbon-14 into our system? Well, plants intake carbon dioxide from the air. The air has a set ratio of carbon-12 to carbon-14, and because these plants, they don't really choose what carbon atoms will go into their own system, the ratio in the atmosphere to their own bodies will stay fairly the same. Same thing with animals, including humans. We also will eat other organisms, but we also eat other plants. And because we are all still living, our ratio is still fairly, or still fairly the same. Once the organism dies, that set amount of carbon in our bodies stays, and the carbon-14 will begin its decay, allowing scientists to find this approximate time of death using this ratio. The carbon decay of a carbon-14 is using usually beta decay. Carbon-14 will output nitrogen, which has a proton more while also exerting out an electron. The half-life 
of carbon-14 was found to be 5,730 years, meaning half of the amount of carbon-14 in an organism will decay in that much more in that amount of time and become nitrogen. For example, if we had one gram of carbon-14 in our system, in that amount of years, it will approximately only have 0.5 grams of carbon-14 in your system. And it could be more and it could be less because it's only an approximation. How carbon dating works. So we have the half-life of carbon-14. And Professor Willard Libby made this formula. LN parentheses NF over NO parentheses will equal negative KT. T being the approximate amount of time the organism has died, K being the constant, which is different for each radioactive isotope, NF being the amount of grams of carbon-14 or any radioactive isotope that you are trying to measure and how much that organism has in that present time, and NO being the amount of carbon-14 or radioactive isotope that organism had when it was still alive, also basically when it was about to die. So in calculating K for this kind of formula, you would make NFEB1 and OB2 T being 5,730, and in that way you can find K, which we found to be 0.00012. Now the downfall of carbon dating is that it's only useful for fossils that are about five, which are about 50,000 years old, and this is because after that point in time, carbon-14 becomes really hard to detect or undetectable. And they have to use other, other kinds of isotopes, radioisotopes, in order to age or date this fossil. Um, because also the amount of carbon-12 to carbon-14 has been very varied during the past years, especially because of industrial evolution, lots of pollution was up in the air, the ratio started changing dramatically. And they found that through this formula, there is about a 12% error margin, meaning that 88% of the time this um, formula will work, but you shouldn't fully depend on this formula to date all your fossils and bones even past 50,000 years old. Also carbon dating, because it's still a working theory, it hasn't been 100% a fact. Scientists are still working on a way to more accurately date the things on Earth. So in doing this, let's do a practice problem and show you how exactly this formula is used. So say there's these bones from an ancient reptile were found to have 1.8 grams um, of carbon-14 today. We know that during that time period when the organism was still alive, the usual amount of grams of carbon-14 was 57.6 grams. Approximately then, how long has this reptile been dead? So we'll take this formula, since we know what K was from the previous slide, 0 0.0012, we should find out what NF is and NO is. So NF being the amount of grams of carbon-14 the organism has now, which is 1.8, and then NO being 
the amount of grams it had when it was it died, which is 57.6. And when you do the math, you would solve for T, and you would get that the organism has been dead for about 28,881.1 years. So here's another problem, just for fun, it's something that you could do on your own as well. So in an ancient burial site, you have a large pile of bones, and they were all found to approximately have the same amount of carbon-14, which is 3.57 grams. Due to the seclusion of the civilization, there was a minimal amount of pollution, causing the ratio of the carbon-12 to carbon-14 to be approximately constant. And doing a little bit of backtracking, it was found that there was 5.23 grams of carbon in the air. Approximately how long has the organism been dead for? I'll give you the formula, remind you what K is, and give you a little bit of time to solve it. Okay, so NF would be 3.57 grams and O would be 5.23 grams. And when you solve for T, you will get 3,128.05 years. And these are my sources. Thank you for listening and have a great rest of the day. Bye.